Hi, I'm Joan Brennecke, and I'm in the Department of Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering at the University of Notre Dame. I'm also a director of the Notre Dame Energy Center and our Sustainable Energy Initiative. And we've been working on the development of ionic liquids for a variety of different energy applications. Ionic liquids are low melting salts. In fact, many of them help melting points below room temperature, so they're actually liquids at room temperature. So this is 100% salt, not salt dissolved in water. And the ionic liquids have very interesting properties. One of the most important is that they have very low vapor pressures. Uh, this means that they don't contribute to air pollution, and it also means that they have very high boiling points. In fact, they don't boil, they usually will decompose before they boil. So we have a uh, liquid that's liquid over a very wide temperature range, and we can take advantage of that in uh, designing ionic liquids for use in uh, various different processes. We've been working on uh, ionic liquids for uh, uh, use in absorption refrigeration systems, uh, in co-fluid vapor compression uh, refrigeration systems, for liquid-liquid extractions, for uh, organics from uh, aqueous solutions. But one of the things that we've really been focusing on is using ionic liquids for doing uh, gas separations, and in particular in uh, separating carbon dioxide uh, from a variety of different gases, including from flue gas from power plants. 85% of our primary energy comes from fossil fuels, things like coal and natural gas and oil. And even with very vigorous developments of renewable energy resources, uh, that percentage isn't going to change very quickly. So it may be several decades before we see renewables uh, displacing fossil fuels to any great extent. And what this means is when we burn those fossil fuels, we put the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Uh, with all of the impacts that that may have on uh, global climate change. So people are very interested in trying to separate carbon dioxide from point sources, things like power plants. And then you could take that carbon dioxide and sequester it in geological formations. Uh, the problem with this is with current technologies, which would use aqueous amines, uh, you would uh, use about 30% of the energy from the power plant to do the separation process. And clearly that would uh, be very expensive, both from an energy standpoint and from a cost standpoint. So what we're trying to do is to develop ionic liquids so that they can do those separations using less energy. Our approach to developing ionic liquids for removing carbon dioxide from flue gas or from power plants has been to incorporate amine functionality directly into the ionic liquid. Uh, what we found is if we put the amine on the anion, instead of putting it on the cation, we can actually get twice the capacity so that we can capture one mole of CO2 for every mole of ionic liquid. Another area where we've made significant advances is in developing ionic liquids do, that do not increase in viscosity when they react with CO2. This has been a significant problem where people have seen as much as a thousand-fold increase in viscosities, which could make the actual processing, uh, design of the process, very difficult. So we've developed a series of ionic liquids that are aprotic heterocyclic anions, and when these react with CO2, they do not increase in viscosity. Uh, we've been also looking at how do we tune the reaction enthalpy, because this is very important in determining what the energy requirements are for the whole process in removing CO2 uh, from the flue gas.